relationships are important in education. That really maybe even the key to teaching well is the relationship you have with a student. If you're able to touch their mind, fine, but if you can touch their heart, then the mind contact lasts longer and goes deeper, I think. This is the World Peace Game, and it's about 28 years old. Uh, it's a political science simulation. Uh, it involves usually about 30, 25 to 30 students. And the game basically put, pits four or five countries against each other in every way, politically, politically, socially, militarily, and economically. They're pitted against each other and they have to use their imagination, use their thinking skills to think their way out of these problems that they're pitched into head first. The game starts with them inheriting situations on the verge of chaos and combat. And uh, they've got to think their way out of that situation. Use this volcano, use this eruption to make something good happen. We have started a counterattack and sending its air force. Oh god. If you look on the World Peace K map, he has like that much oil. So does Caden. And Caden's our complete ally. And we can also get some oil from Okay. Him. We're not going to. Like, I'm saying whenever no, Caden said you would. Caden, right. we're not going to attack them? I know. All the ships that we moved was for confusion and it wasn't for battle and that we come in peace. First, I gave him seven days to do something about the microscopic organisms and he's now two days left and he hasn't even boarded the island and tried to do anything about it and I think he's trying to attack me instead of trying to do what he said he was going to do. I want it to be uh, so thrilling that they don't want to do without it, but so challenging, challenging that they almost can't do it. And, and to have the two contrasts, have those two opposite things working together, it's for me that kind of tension is what I think is where learning occurs. They have that love and fear, and that learning just, just torques on that kind of mis mismatch, I think. And that's, that seems to be what's happening in this game. It's a game that makes you think really hard. It makes you really think about what's really going on in the world. What I think is you can't be all about war and you can't be, again, this may sound bad, but you can't be all about peace. Yeah, not like all like flowers and grassy fields and uh, Last year, solar panels and Last houses. Year. No, it's not like that. Um, mm -hmm. You'll have to have some defense. It's challenging. There is no right or wrong answer. The if you wanted a right answer, choose the one that helps everyone and then think about yourself. We start off with a reading from Sun Tzu, the Chinese general, his book, The Art of War, which of course, as you know, is basically how to stay out of war. And for the most part, if you're in it, how to get out of it quickly. And he says, <clears throat> therefore, a victorious army first wins and then seeks a battle. A defeated army first battles and then seeks victory. Read that again, yeah. We've really had enough of people attacking. I mean, we've been lucky. I mean, the, the time, it, now I'm feeling really weird because I'm living what Sun Tzu said one week. One week he said, those who go into battle and win and will want to go back, and those who lose in battle will want to go back and win. And so I've been winning battles, so I'm sort of going into battles, more battles. And I think it's sort of weird to be living what Sun Tzu said. This session of the World Peace Game is about to commence. And because I have such confidence in you, I'm going to do something I've never done before. What? The game has three new crises in it. I've never put new crises in once the game has started. These are crises concerning water rights. One of the big problems in the world today is people having enough clean water for whatever they need, drinking and washing and so forth. It's a big problem. And guys, I really think they're going to be almost impossible to get out of. But I really have confidence you're going to be able to do it. I don't know why I think you can. So I would never do this if I didn't think you could. 
but I don't know how you're going to do it. I cannot imagine. So good luck to you. I'm sorry, but I, um, okay, but I really need to talk to Joe. Mr. Hunter, he's a brain stretcher. My brain, when I come from his classroom, it just feels like a big, it's just like empty. If I shake my head around, I can feel it swishing. My, my it's just brain, like, when it, I come back from cl his class, it feels like it's just jelly. learned so much. I hope that they never need me again, that I put myself out of a job, that they have everything that they could possibly have gotten from this experience from me, from my influence, or whatever it might have, been, might have been, and that they take away every tool, every creative thinking tool, every critical thinking tool that they can, and they have a confidence that they can solve any problem, they can deal with anything. One of the things I learned was that other people matter. In this game, one person can't win, everyone has to win. And I think that taught me a lot about cooperating with other people, being generous, and uh, having an attitude that if you work together, you can't achieve anything. In, in view of all the crises being solved, and in, in view of, of everyone's asset value being over 100 billion, I hereby declare this World Peace Game won! When I look at things like the game and what happened with these kids, as I said to them today, if just one of you is in position to leverage something good for the world, just one of you is in that kind of position, that can make all the difference. And if you've picked up a tool from this game, a thinking tool or critical thinking skill that helps you do that, you may save us all. And that's what I'm naively hoping might happen.